The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to An Open Door on the Art. I'm Barbara Richer, and I'm the host of this program as we travel around the capital region visiting the ar artists that enrich our life. I took a little journey just last week uh, down Chatham Way and found one of the most remarkable places I think I've seen in a long while. It is called Public Spaces for the 21st Century. Performance spaces. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. That's right. <laughs> Performance spaces. I, I have a wonderful guest with me today who's going to keep me on track, keep me corrected. I typed out the wrong thing. It's performance spaces for the 21st century, lovingly called PS21, which was how I actually was introduced to it as PS21 and thought, I bet they're housed in an old public school. So I drove over there looking for a, a revamped public school, and I didn't find one. And was then it was explained to me that it's performance basis for the 21st century. Uh, and it isn't even a building at this point. It is in a beautiful orchard where a saddle span tent is set up every summer for the past 10 years and magic happens under that tent with all kinds of performance art and dance and music. It's, it's quite invigorating and very beautiful. Uh, and once I met the founder and president who is with us today, Judy Grunberg, I understood why this came to be such a special place. So, Judy, I hope that you'll share uh, some of what you shared with me about how this idea, how this notion came, and, and how it continues to be such a vibrant part of your life and part of the life in Chatham. Well, Barbara, uh, <clears throat> I've been a resident of Chatham for about 50 years now. I came up to the area with two young children, I think practically in diapers, <laughs> the children that is, um, in the mid-60s. From? And uh, from New York City. Mm -hmm. And I um, have had a wonderful life there. My kids went all through the local school system. Um, I did uh, miss some of the things that I had experienced as a child, however, which were, which was exposure to most of the performing arts, all of the performing arts. Mm -hmm. And um, as I continued to live in the area, uh, lots of things did begin to happen, and there certainly were, were um, music groups coming up and, um, and occasional other kinds of performances, theater groups forming. But there was never, and Chatham, which is my home base, mm -hmm. um, never had a real space for performances. And my husband, when he was alive, and he was an architect, um, we used to kind of dream about, wouldn't it be great, da da da, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> anyway, these are things that sort of pass through your mind as you continue on your daily rounds of life. Um, the kids grew up, went back, left the house, um, and he, we talked about it a little bit. And then, unfortunately, he died in 97. But I kept thinking about this, and I guess I must have mentioned this to a few people, mm -hmm. because I'm not one to never open <laughs> Keep my mouth, your as hat. you can tell. <laughs> so I, um, and one day my older son got a call from a friend of his from high school saying, mm -hmm. uh, I know your mom's kind of interested in a property, you know, getting a property for her space Art and, her, her, and you know there happens to be I noticed that there's this certain farm for sale anyway that was the beginning of the end and um, so I did a number of years ago I would say maybe 14 15 years ago mm -hmm. buy this this property mm -hmm. and with the eye in mind of building something some kind of a performance venue and then uh, shortly after that another property adjacent to it became available and mm -hmm. I purchased that too just to have a little of, of so it ended up to be over 100 acres of really beautiful orchard land. It is really beautiful. I was so privileged to be able to walk around on it. There wasn't a performance happening or anything, right. but um, I could see where the tent was going to go. The paths are all well groomed.
groomed. The, the drive-in is very well groomed. Uh, parking lots are all available. You even have picnic areas, I oh, think yeah. you said. Yeah. It's just, it's just a, and the views are sensational of the Berkshires, the rolling hills of the right. foothills. Well, the Catskills. The, book, hills, the right. foothills, the, well, the Catskills, right? To the, right, to the west. The Columbia um, Hills. They're just, just beautiful. Well, I'm glad you, well, you obviously have a good imagination because, uh, as you mentioned, there was no tent there. There's just a concrete slab, and the tent goes up, has gone up every year in the early summer and comes down in the fall. So you're just preparing for the tent to so go up now. So we're preparing and you know we have our program set and we have all our people in place and, and you know that we're hiring that work with us for the summer but no tent yet. No that tent will go up in actually next week. I think. But I know too if people go on your website which is a wonderful really it's a wonderful website and it, it's got so much good information and it's very easy to navigate and there are there's a picture of that tent yes. on there and it, it's breathtaking. It really is beautiful. It is. I, I will miss it. I will miss it. When, and you'll when miss it be. because? Well, because <laughs> after all these years, um, our original tent really was beginning to be un, untenable. It was getting like rips and things, and we were told mm -hmm. it was dangerous. Uh, it might be dangerous. So my board and, and we decided, you know, we need to make something more permanent. Mm -hmm. Country spring water. <laughs> PS21 spring water. <laughs> this is in lieu, as I mentioned before, of uh, we do not sell bottled water at the site anymore, but we do sell our bottles. Being environmentally are, sound people. Right, right, exactly. And so I can recommend that everybody buy a PS21 everybody, water absolutely. bottle when they get there. They come in beautiful designer colors, <laughs> different ones every year. That happens to be a color that I will probably oh, buy. Good. Well, I, yeah, I do so when I arrived at your office last week and we started to talk, you came zooming into the room full of energy and excitement because you had just gotten the building permit that day. Yes, we did. After a number of years, um, we'd gotten the permit to build the final um, structure. Um, we just needed a special use permit mm -hmm. because of the zoning. Um, but And so we're very thrilled about that. And it's going to be not exactly where the tent is, <clears throat> at further up the hill with a, with a magnificent view mm -hmm. and sort of dug into the hill. And um, what it's going to be really um, a whole year environment because um, there's going to be a kind of a black box component that we can use all winter that will be heated. That will be wonderful. And then in the summer, opening up into something that we hope will give the feeling of the tent but be you know stronger and more and permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, so this sort of increases our capacity for programming to well, do wonderful workshops and things during the winter season, which we of course have never been able to do to show films, not after sundown. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like this huge film buff because I grew up. Well, there wasn't a whole lot to do when I was growing up, frankly, because there was no television and there was mm -hmm. no. Um, no computers, and there were, you know, I mean, there was stuff to you just do. Had to entertain it yourself. It was to entertain yourself. You mm -hmm. went out, you know, dancing, and with you your read, boyfriend, <laughs> and you read, and you, but there was radio, mm -hmm. and there were movies. So that's why I'm like a, a huge radio fan and a movie fan. And you so, do a lot of that programming that we'll, we'll we'll be talking about. But there are a lot of wonderful movies and um, uh, and programming in the performance art art true. space. Yeah, exactly. True. We so. do, and, and so um, so we run the gamut. Our original Original plan because I I grew up with um, my parents were amateur musicians and I grew up sort of surrounded by music and my mother loved dance as I did and we went to everything mm -hmm. in New York in those days everything from Martha Graham to the, to the Russian. Um, uh, Moisey of ballet, dancers, right? the ballet mm -hmm. and the Moisey of the Russian folk dancers mm -hmm. in Bal, which was an Israeli folk dance troupe, and and the fame and Alicia Markova and Anton Dolan, these famous ballet dancers mm -hmm. that are, his, mm -hmm. are now history. Um, so anyway, I became, you know, really in love with dance, and um, when we decided to to make something for the performances here, I realized that dance is really the most underserved or the most unavailable, un inaccessible one of the performing arts. It's, there's mm -hmm. just not a lot around. And there's mm -hmm. the wonderful, wonderful Jacob's Pillow in the summer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that's sort of about it. You mm -hmm. know, occasionally there'll be a dance performance at another venue. But there's really nothing devoted to dance in our area. So we decided we would we would try to fill 
that, that gap. boy. And so really 10 years ago then you started the Chatham Dance Festival. Right. Well, you know, we didn't call it that at the time. It's funny what how we're it? doing sort of, we just <laughs> called it one of the performances. Okay. You know, we said, okay, we got music, we got dance, we got movies, you know, we got theater. We did, uh, we, had, we were doing a, a bunch of theater at the time. We did some plays every summer. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just that. And then when we realized that, you know, we had three or four dance companies, and we realized also that, well, they happened to be in August that one year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a lot more convenient for us because, you know, for the dancers, you have to put down this marley floor so that they, you know, they don't have this hard surface to dance yes. on. And you had to put it down, and you had to take it up and put it down and tape it and take mm -hmm. it up for the, you know, if you had a different type of performance there. And that's when we realized, you know, wow, let's concentrate the dance and let's make it a real festival. And then let's call it something. So that's what happened. You know, often you're doing something without realizing that you're making a thing. That's and then to, you have to recognize it. It's going to continue and continue and exactly. continue. So. Exactly. And then give it, you know, and then you give it a name. And it's still not that well known. I mean, it's, you know, this year, I'd have to say, uh, I mean, I think every year we've had wonderful companies. But I think this year is one of our absolute best. Talk to us a little bit about, I know that there's one in particular that's been coming back, though, for 10 years. Oh, and that's Parsons You might want to mention dance. them. That's and, Parsons And some dance. of the other things that we can look well, for in August. Right. right? In well, August. David Parsons, it's interesting, because I have been a fan of his company. Um, and uh, they they are really one of the few companies that's that's internationally known or, mm -hmm. or were internationally known even then or twelve years ago. Um, my friend Yehuda Hanani, who's a wonderful friend and cellist, happened to have collaborated with um, David Parsons on a work at one time, uh, about the time that I formed my board. And he, his wife Hannah, is on my board, and he was on my advisory board. And he said to me, you know, I think David Parsons would love to hear about your place. It Magic. was amazing. No, Magic. and I said, oh, my God, really? Well, yeah, you know. And he said, yeah. And then he wants you to call him in California. And I said, oh, really? And, you know, and this relationship began. And what David said, yeah, I'd love to come. It'd be great. Maybe my, my company can come and spend some days there and da-da-da. And, yes, I'd be happy to be on your advisory board. And I'm going, what? Oh, my God, really? Of that's course, that's history, and since then, I just, he's like an extraordinary guy. And they love us. The company loves us because they come up every year now, and they're the only company that's come every single year out of our 10 years, and yes. probably the only company that sells out. But well, I'm working on it because there are other companies that are wonderful, yes. and it's just that after a while, you know, people get into this sort of a habit. Oh, well, yes, we always go to Parsons every year. They recognize that name, and exactly. so we'll, we'll go so, to that. Right. right. So we do want it. We have to do a little work in getting some of these other mm -hmm. companies recognized as well. How uh, many but, different companies do you have coming in, dance companies? Well, this year, I believe it's four, and um, actually... It's five, really, because we like to include Dance Oh My. This is actually a free event for our, uh, our area. Um, art Oh My is an art center in Ghent. I, I, it's relatively well known. Um, they have workshops and uh, for dancers, musicians, writers, painters. We were lucky enough um, a, a couple weeks ago to have someone from uh, Oh My Come. Oh, you so did. So I'm hoping if our audience really watches us regularly that they'll watch that whole interview. Oh, that is so great. That's a wonderful place, and so, it's so nice to be a neighbor to you. It is, and we are. We've been collaborating with them more and more. We love the people who, yes. who run the place, yes. and I don't know who it was that you interviewed. It was, was it Ruth? Uh, Akima. Aki oh, Akimi. 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 Oh, she's yeah. wonderful. Yes, yes. Um, so we have, um, we've been working, in fact, our gala was held at, at, at Art oh, oh My oh last nice. year because we mm -hmm. don't have a space yet mm -hmm. in, the, in the winter, in the off season, but to will. have an event, but Eventually. we will someday. Yes. Um, so, and that's, that's our fifth dance event, so really five dance events in August. That's wonderful. Um, and they're doing works in progress with their dance uh, Oh My alumni. And, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a, an audience, it's sort of a back and forth discussion. Um, and it's one of, they say, so you think you don't understand modern dance. Mm -hmm. And the director, um, who's Christopher Morgan, has his own dance company in Washington. But he comes up, and he is the director of the dance part of, of our, of our Art Oh My. Mm -hmm. And he, so he kind of runs this this session, and it's very interesting, interesting. for people, you know, um, to see inside mm -hmm. dance and. and 
and ask questions. See it from the inside so, out. Exactly. And maybe have some of those questions answered that exactly. they've always had. Exactly. So that's five companies. And the other companies, well, after yes, Parsons we'll have are, them. well, Brian Sanders Junk, it's a Philadelphia company. I, um, my, um, I fell in love with them, having seen them in New York. They are they they work with odd uh, materials. Mm -hmm. uh, they had one thing where they were wearing plastic bottles on their feet, and uh. making funny noises, and it's kind of a cross between um, the gymnastics, acrobatics, and dance, and some of it's screamingly funny. Yeah, and so we always like to do you know to to bring different to break aspects. out of that box a little bit. Exactly, right? exactly. That's one. And then the, another company is Galim. Which is wonderful. Um, Galim uh, has performed. I don't know if they've been in the area. Oh, they were down at DRA. There's a there's a really good event called Dancers Responding to AIDS mm -hmm. that takes place every year in in Catskill okay. and also in Fire Island, and that's where I saw Galim. And they are extraordinary. Um, they are. Um, their director is somebody called Andrea Miller. And she, it's actually, she's quite pregnant the last time I saw her, and I hope she'll be up with her baby this summer when she's here. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to talk a lot so, about what each company no, does, no, just, but just, just the just names. Just give us an idea. And That's then good. we have Kegwin and Company, who is pretty well known in the area, um, has been at Jacob's Pillow a number of times. Mm -hmm. and the interesting thing is that one of their main dancers is the featured dancer on as kind of our, our icon. That, I wondered who that was. Our poster boy this summer. He is a doll. He's amazing. Kyle Hot well, the interesting thing is his dance appears 21 at least four other times because he dances with another company, oh. Take Dance, which comes to us every few years. Mm -hmm. So people are familiar with him, and he is just amazing. He's barely in his 20s, I think, or maybe He looks 24. like a very young man, but He's that's a young such man. a dramatically you wonderful, him, isn't it? strong uh, Well, this oh, is a great yeah. photograph by Michael Murphy. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so he's our post sport and he dances with Kegwin, and they are, you know, again, really, really well known. Mm -hmm. So our job is, how do we get people to, to realize that these companies are, you know, so fabulous yes. and come and see them? These are very first class, very wonderful, uh, well received um, dance companies. So it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Exactly. To even come to see some of them would right. be amazing. Right. That's what we think. Yeah. So we, you know, you know, you try to think when you have an organization like this and you need to get the word out. You think, you know, how can I get people here? How can I get them here? Mm -hmm. Because people have told me once they get there, oh my God, you know, it's like, this is amazing. Um, and then there are even people who live a few miles away, and, and this is going to be our tenth season. And they'll say, "Oh, really? I've never been there." Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, you know. All right, maybe you don't want to spend any money. Just come up and walk around, and then go yes, home, and then know, go or home. See the beauty of it. Take a picnic. You know, pick an apple. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But, and then, you know, we have, um, we have another uh, dance event, which is a workshop. Naomi Goldberg Haas, who has a great company called um, Dances for a Variable Population, mm -hmm. works with dancers and non-dancers of all descriptions, all ages, all um, abilities. Mm -hmm. And um, we met her a number of years ago. I think this is going to be her fourth year teaching workshops at our That's site. That's wonderful. Sometimes she comes with her company, and sometimes she comes uh, you and know, just as a teacher. And teaches. Mm -hmm. So people can actually come to a workshop. They and can come learn. and in our barn, in our barn studio, it's held there, which is actually it's sort of like dancing in an old barn, but with this beautiful floor. Oh, wonderful! And the light coming in through the through the cracks yeah, in the through wood. the cracks, oh. right through the. Oh, yeah, right, right. That's inspiration, exactly. I think. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, you know, we we do. She also teaches a, a workshop at. Um, uh, Copay at, at no not Copay at um, Camp Hill Ghent, mm -hmm. um, which she which is very exciting for the residents there because they mm -hmm. don't get out that much and mm -hmm. she comes to them and and they work together on, on just, various on things and just, just moving thing, right? and she she's an inspiring woman Naomi Goldberg has. Um, and she has one year. They actually performed uh, with the dancers. She had the workshop was it was kind of an extended uh, workshop, you know. And mm -hmm. for the people who really were, and there were a bunch of people who were like ex-dancers or had always dreamed of 
being dancing on the stage mm -hmm. or dancing with professionals or whatever. And it was a very moving experience. I'm and sure a lot of them said it changed their life I'm and so sure forth. sure it was. And then they, they, some of them continued with her. They went to New York and they worked with her a little bit. And then, of course, is it this year that Parsons sort of wraps up your dance Oh, yes. Period? Oh, right. yes. They, yes. Okay. Parsons actually has a residency, a three-week residency with us, which they received a grant through NISCA, and we were, we're so pleased that they're Amazing. able to do this. Because um, we should mention, too, you have this residence where the where your performers actually can stay. Oh, right. And then this practice space in the barn. That's so right. you're... you're a full service exactly. art yes. center. Yes, yes, that no, that is very true. One of the wonderful parts of this whole project has been um, being able to make a space for people to live and stay in and work in mm -hmm. um, during their tenure. So Parsons will be there and doing a residence. Be there. And every dance company um, who comes to perform for us on the weekend has um, usually comes early in the week, you know, either Monday or Tuesday oh. or Wednesday, and then lives in the White House. We, they have a food stipend. They they do their mm -hmm. own cooking. I've discovered that dancers, like artists, love to cook and love to eat. Although you, sometimes you would know they love to eat you know, by looking so at them. <laughs> but maybe it's because they exercise twenty I'm hours sure a that's day it. or something. They burn it up so I'm fast. I'm sure that's it. So um, they have a place, and they say they love that because very often, even though their contracts always require them to have lodging, sometimes it's in a motel or mm -hmm. some other mm -hmm. kind of a place, and they don't get a chance to be together. So this but is here, much more personal. It's much, it and, is, and you know. Real. So they, and then they just walk across a little way to the rehearsal space in the barn, mm -hmm. uh, which is approximately the size of the stage. Wonderful. So that wonderful, you know, and with the exception of one post, and I keep telling people I can't remove that post, so the whole barn will fall down. We did. No we removed space. everything we could <laughs> except for that one post. I mean, I could, of course, if somebody gave me two million dollars and I put up, you know, but, but right now that. that would go for that a new would, building. So exactly, we not you are that so post. right. <laughs> exactly, good point. So I'm going to move us from the dance, okay. although I'm going to encourage people to look at, at that website and plan for the month of August to spend every weekend watching a new dance company at PS21. But I also wanted to have time to um, talk about the um, the rest of the things that you do both in oh. June and July because there are all kinds of performance art that, that goes on then. I, right. I don't want to neglect our music right. and even our comedy and our right. drama. All, it's amazing. Well, this will be, um, because it's our 10th anniversary and it's our 10th year uh, uh, for the Paul Grunberg Memorial Bach concert because Paul and I were huge Bach fans and he was an even bigger Bach fan. I mean, I would take the other side. I would take the Beethoven side. Mm -hmm. Um, but in my heart, I, it, it's Bach, you know, and, and it, it, it's just something that's sort of beyond beyond music to me. It, it's yes. not like a regular composer. So I, every year we've had a concert in his honor that's all Bach. In honor of your husband. Bach, in honor of, of my husband. Um, and it's a little, I think it was it was a little tricky of me because I'm like, well, I know people will come for Paul because they love Paul. Your husband. And then if they don't love Bach, but then they'll learn <laughs> they'll love to Paul. love Bach, you That's know, good. after, after. A little education via right. Paul. And every year, um, and I try my kids, some of my kids come when they can, which is mm -hmm. nice. Uh, <clears throat> but every year it's a different uh, type of music, a different group. Uh, someday I want to do all jazz based on Bach. I haven't worked that out yet. Nice. Um, but this year, uh, and we've done we've done uh, violin and cello and piano and and um, uh, three harpsichords one year, all kinds of stuff. This year it's music for voices and instruments. Voices and, and instruments. And so of Bach. Mm -hmm. how, you know what could what could be more amazing? Voices. When Wonderful. you think that this guy got up every whatever morning it was and wrote a cantata for the next Sunday. No. You know, I, you know, it's and it's been his 13 to, children and his whatever. With difficult his, to imagine. And really, and it was just, you know, for him, it was just, well, you had to do it. had to be ready for mm -hmm. rehearsal Saturday mm -hmm. whenever they did it. And that was it, one after the other. And each one's sort of more amazing. So we're doing um, the Broad Street Chorale and Orchestra, which it's, it, are groups founded by David Smith, who is um, a, an organist. He is now retired from his uh, his. Day job, which mm -hmm. he had for many years in order to make a living. Mm -hmm. um, 
has retired to Kinderhook and uh, bought a house there, and he uh, was inspired to have to build a chorus oh, uh, where they nice. perform uh, at the church and do uh, not not necessarily religious works and just do large works. Mm -hmm. And he's done an amazing job with it. So that'll be a so we, neighbor. We, it's absolutely, and so he uh, he said, no, he'd love to do Bach, and we worked on it together. And he also has a, an amazing uh, group of instrumentalists that he gets from the surrounding area. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a chamber orchestra, and then the voices. Yeah, and how there's going to be, uh, and one of the things he's going to be doing, in addition to a couple of uh, cantatas and a motet, is the uh, concerto for oboe and violin, which oh. is so beautiful. And it's in the middle of this beautiful orchard right. in this tent, it'll be breathtaking. So that is our opening That's performance. That's your opening so performance. Just to let okay. everybody know. <laughs> <clears throat> and if you do come and you, you and you love Bach, you will also love our champagne reception, Very nice. <laughs> which we will have for the whole audience afterwards. Because the concert's in the afternoon, okay. which is also an important thing we find <clears throat> because a lot of people um, prefer to come in the afternoon. I think too, and we want audiences to come from more and more of a distance, and so to be able to. To come um, at 2.30 in the afternoon instead of 8.30 at night that makes is so a big true. difference absolutely, driving home. Absolutely, absolutely okay. true. No. The only I'm, thing we have to have at night is a performance that requires lighting. Right. So, for example, something like David Parsons that relies so much on, of course. on the move. creation of the, on, right. you know, light. So. I'm going to move us just a okay. bit because we now have five minutes. Oh, my and goodness. Look at, that. We, look at what we have to talk about. All right. So, beyond Bach, which opens us, we still have... Um, we still have uh, theater. We have mm -hmm. theater pieces. We have bluegrass pieces. Oh, yes. We okay, have... so let's see how fast I can, oh my God. I can go just through this. Go through I'm just going to list them it. and okay. let people go and find out. Oh, okay. I've picked out about five, so you okay. go ahead. All right. Well, this is going to be our third year of the Hudson Air Radio Theater which is um, an interpretation of radio plays, but on the stage great with fun. the sound effects and all that. Great That's fun. great. And, a lot, and this is a local thing with a lot of local actors. And then we have something after my own heart, su Summer Shtick, which is just an evening of comic mayhem, we call it, uh, with Nancy Rothman and Robert Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. People should read that online because that sounds like a ball. It's going to be, I don't even know what they're doing yet. It's, I mean, it's, it's going to be, we dangerous. just said, you guys do whatever. Sounds and they're, got it, they're working with <laughs> With uh, Amanda Boyd. Okay, singer. we have to keep moving. And then we're moving. Now we have Dom <laughs> Flemons. I think I heard the American songster. Yes. Old time folk music, including ragtime and, and blues, southern and blues. folk, and yep. amazing banjo. His, his Wonderful. Group. Then we have the art of North Indian music, Raga and Tala. So with, with, the, with the drums and the flute and, and the, the thing. Yes, and Indian it's music. Amazing. And the tabla. What's actually, uh, well, it's called Raga and Tala. It's Bansuri and Tabla are the two instruments. Beautiful. Then we have Villa Lobos brothers, an amazing group of Mexican brothers that are, and we also have we we have a um, because we have a, a pretty large Mexican population mm -hmm. in our area. We're doing a special performance, uh, an afternoon performance in the church where Wonderful. they go, um, because a lot of these people are working at night and can't come to the performance. That's and great. Um, and we printed the program in Spanish as well. You are a completely. So, I just want to mention this. You are a completely community oriented person. You. We you try. really reach into the community. Well, we, we try. And the community keeps changing, and we have to keep changing. Yes. But, and then we have the Family Circus, which is circus artists from Montreal National Circus School. That sounds and that astonishing is, for, a family. Amazing it's also, for a family. But it's also it's in the, in the evening because, again, because of lighting and so of on. Of course. But 7.30. It's not yeah. too late. Right. No. Um, and then we have Guy Klushevsik, Klushevsik, who plays the most amazing, amazing accordion you've ever heard with another accordion player. And he is a brilliant genius. So that, and then we have Ashley Bathgett playing cello, and she is a young genius on the cello. Uh, she's been with uh, Bang on a Can, and they're yes. letting her out from Mass Mocha for the afternoon so she can uh, perform. I read with that us. she was with Bang on a Can. Yeah. I mean, that's one I'm going to come to for sure. She yes. just looks like she'd be wonderful. She is absolutely charming and dedicated and passionate. But so we're not finished yet. I wait. Then you need to also mention. 
all the workshops. Well, oh my goodness, the workshops! Thank you, thank you. Okay, them. okay, but that's a great. couple of them. Well, anyway, we have adult workshops, so rounds, rounds, rounds with Sherry Mayorga, Bauer Mayorga, where we just all sing rounds. It's so fun. That we do that like in fun. the barn. Then there are the theater arts workshops for kids, the West African dance and drum workshop, which is absolutely amazing. Jamal Jackson, who has had his company with us many years, mm -hmm. teaches uh, African dance for kids. These are for kids from eight to eighteen, I believe. Wonderful. And then. We have free Fridays for kids um, that are on Fridays at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, during the month of July. And we have uh, Joe Bouchak, the storyteller, West African Dance and Drum, which will be a performance that these kids will have put together. By the kids put together in the workshop. That's Ma great. Magician Jim Snack, mm -hmm. storyteller, and my Motoko. And then the uh, the John Company is going to do Skink, which I which is great with funny costumes, and they're going to have gymnastic kind of stuff. Oh. Wonderful. For for the kids, and I don't think I hope I haven't forgotten a single thing, um, except our movies. Okay, and yes, they movies. should check. They it should online. go online because um, I mean they really haven't. They really have not missed a single thing. They they are reaching out to every form of art, inviting you in to experience it, offering some things for free. Even the tickets are not that expensive, but the performance uh, performers are astonishing. So it's just a complete win win situation. I'm so glad that we discovered you. Well, Barbara. The, the movies really at, at, at 8.30 for those of you who uh, get over there are, are wonderful. They have... Um, there's a whole series of um, train movies. Train movies, right. right? And then there's a whole series of dance, dance and movies, music. dancing right. and music right. movies. Uh, so uh, there, it's a big, a big um, range from uh, Roberta from. Um, uh, uh, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, which I think is the last one we've had a Fred Astaire movie every single summer, and, and we sort of run out movie. of all the great ones. And I don't think I think it's the last one we, we have can to start show. over again. I guess you know it's true because people <laughs> keep saying, you know, we have a questionnaire every year, and we say, what would you like to see? And some people were saying things we've already shown, but they might have missed. Maybe them. they and missed. So it. we might have after to. ten years you start over. But we have a themed, and so we have a week that de it's devoted to films every year with a theme, and all of course this is all on the website, you, and you can find all of that. That's right, right. you find all of that on the website, which is ps21chatham.org. Go there. It's magic. And um, thank you so much, Judy. I enjoyed this as much as walking, o getting over there and seeing you in person. <laughs> well, we could I go love on talking forever. to you because you really get it. You well, sort of get what we're and about. And I think our audience will too. And we really have to get there and support it because um, it's just an amazing, an amazing place with uh, with all the right moves. So uh, I will see you at PS21, and I will see you the next time on Open Door in the Arts. Thanks so much.